it's been very, um, very interesting with the youth. I've had uh, three or four sessions with them, including some quite large sessions. My sense, you know, because I've been involved in this for a long time, including all the way back to my time in education, I would say compared to even 10 years ago, our youth today are more outspoken, they speak their mind, they're thinking about issues, and I find it really encouraging. So at two of the sessions we had, quite a large group of people, but they're, they're just far more questions than we had time for, despite having an hour and a half. Far more questions. So I'm really encouraged. I mean, when I compare it, certainly 20 years ago, but even 10 years ago, just people are speaking their minds a lot more. I find it very encouraging. But the good news for youth, really, today is Shanti Pereira. Uh, Mr. Thaman, we need yeah. to talk a little bit on soft power. because yeah, let me, I haven't finished my answer, sorry. So, <laughs> so, you know, Shanti is showing us what's possible. It's showing a whole generation what's really possible. She broke her record again, you know, today. Good. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh, my question was on soft power because right. uh, Mr. Tan Talks yes. about the role of the president in actually interacting with government. Yes. Also, we have an influence on government policy. And then yes. you used to be government. You used to be in. Uh, you used to be in there doing all the discussions. Right. So right. if you are elected, how is that gonna? What are your thoughts on this? Well, it depends entirely on the relationship between the president and the prime minister. Um, these are conversations in private. Uh, if they have uh, respect for each other, um, then of course uh, the president will have. Um, uh, a greater ability to be able to provide independent advice and um, knows will know that it's taken seriously. But it depends entirely on whether there's um, a respect between the Prime Minister and the President. Oh, we are, I've been going all over the island, so no particular reason. I plan to come to Toapayo all along, and uh, it was a good evening to come. Uh, Mr. Starman, we have a question real quick. Uh, your team has prepared very well uh, to put up your posters across right. the island uh, right. in, within a short amount of time right. yesterday. Uh, conversely, your fellow candidate, uh, presidential yes. candidates yes. Uh, have said that they don't necessarily have enough manpower to put up the right. banners as well as the posters. Right. So do you feel that you have an advantage over your fellow uh, candidates in terms of access to manpower? Yeah. Not really. Actually, I've spent, I've spent a lot of time in the last month with my team in mobilizing volunteers. I mean, we put a huge amount of effort into it. Um, and, you know, the reality is that um, uh, many people don't have access to social media. We wanted to show that the presidential elections are important. They're not less important than general elections when all parties put up posters all around the island. The presidential elections are important. And I wanted to convey that, particularly to people who are not on social media. The day may eventually come when we don't need it. I think uh, it will take a long time uh, when every, before everyone is really monitoring social media very closely. So uh, we felt it's still useful. But what was very important to us, from the very start we planned on sustainability. In fact, I insisted on it. And in fact, I had a range of proposals as to how we could make it most sustainable without, of course, um, uh, busting our budget. And uh, we've gone for uh, sustainability of the type of paper used, the type of ink used, and our recycling plan. Uh, the paper is all FSC certified. That's the Forest Stewardship Council that certifies um, environmentally sustainable forestry practices. The ink is soy-based. And very importantly, we have a recycling plan for both the paper and the plastic. So for instance, the big plastic boards, uh, we cut off the rough edges and, and reuse them as smaller boards. So we've been very conscious of this from day one. Um, without busting our whole budget, we built sustainability into this whole process uh, from day one. But the reality is posters are necessary uh, in our electoral landscape and uh, I don't want the presidential elections to seem unimportant. I do want to reach out to everyone in our heartlands and have put great effort into mobilizing volunteers. Anything Mr. Tarman, else? everyone's still talking about the pineapple. Right. Could you tell us why the pineapple? Well, we did consider the durian as well, by the way. Uh, the pineapple was, we, we looked at a range of symbols. Um, and I was consulting quite a large group of people of different age groups, by the way. And uh, what was interesting is that we agreed on the pineapple in less than 10 seconds. It was just a hit. It was something we liked. It was something we felt was easy to understand. And it was just likable. Eight 
Right. Well, I'm not doing a physical rally. Um, um, I'm planning to have a town hall. In other words, a, a town hall where it's by invitation, but everyone can register in advance. And then there's a limit to the number of people taking part. And that way I can have a bit more interaction. Um, that's my plan, basically. Otherwise, I'm walking around uh, as usual. But uh, as I've said before, uh, I've been walking around for <laughs> more than 20 years, so uh, it's not uh, new to me. Uh, obviously, going outside Jerome and outside the West uh, uh, is something I take very seriously. But I've been very encouraged so far. Um, most of Singapore is not very different from Jurong in terms of uh, just the warmth and um, friendliness of people. I, I take this election very seriously. I don't think I have any big advantage, to be frank. Um, we, we all come in with um, positives of our own as the three candidates, each of the three candidates. Uh, I'm, I'm not taking anything for granted. I think it's going to be a real contest and I'm taking it very seriously. Okay, thank you so much. I think you have enough time. So, I, I make no assumptions. I make no assumptions at all. I'm just going to try my very, very best. Mr. Taman, uh, mm. Arisco has uh, raised some concerns about your affiliation oh, with the <laughs> organization. So, I, yeah, I think you have to confirm just that. I, 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 I haven't looked seriously into uh, uh, that consideration because it, uh, it, it doesn't, um, uh, it's not based on a very good understanding of my uh, relationship with the different international organizations, be it the UN or any other organization. I've been flying the Singapore flag high uh, for years now and for good purpose. It's in our national interest and I do it with our national interest in mind. So you still currently hold on to some international flags? Yes, as I've explained several times before, I will be in fact holding on to some of them even after uh, the elections, regardless of whether I win. Um, it's important to Singapore. I, I do this, uh, every appointment I take is with the approval of um, uh, the Prime Minister when I was in government, but of course in future it will be different, but it's Singapore's interest.